Hello, in this video we're going to cover using plugs to quickly populate and detail your objects. Kit Basher for 3ds Max. But real quick guys, if you're looking for what I consider to be the best 3D modeling tutorial on the internet, I recommend checking out my Udemy course. It's got tutorials on Blender, 3ds Max, CAD programs such as Plasticity and Moai 3D and a lot of ZBrush as well. So if you want to master a variety of programs to really bring your skills up to the next level and master 3ds Max, Blender, ZBrush, and Plasticity, be sure to check out that course. Link is in the description. Let's continue. But before we get into Kitbash Blender, let me show you how to do things manually in case you don't have any of these plugins and you just want to do things the old fashioned way. So for example, let's say I create a quick object here, something like that. All right, so let's say we've got this and you want to quickly integrate this into your mesh. Of course, you can go a lot more complex here. I like this combination of more sharp and more smooth parts here. So let's say we've got this. So when it comes to a box, it's much easier. First thing I would do is just to do a little bit of test laid here. Get this, all right. Then what we can do is clone this. And you can use, for example, the Select and Place tool, and then just kind of left click on this and then hold here, and then you can scale as well. You can also use a clever text script to publish things like so. All right, once we've got this, we then need to give this the proper room. So I'm gonna select these polygons and delete. Then we simply attach this, and now we just need to go and target weld. So it is a good idea to keep your eye on the topology, otherwise you'll get slightly bad topology. You get a few triangles. What you can also do is go into border, hold control and click here to convert to vertex and then just weld with a high value to quickly zip it up like so. And then just do a little bit of target weld. So when you're doing this kind of thing, it's a good idea to keep an eye on how the topology of your plug differs on the topology of your object here otherwise you'll get a few triangles here or kind of odd topology like this which we want to avoid this kind of thing happening here so probably want to just connect that all right that's the easy one however if you have a curved surface things are a little bit more difficult so let's go with the sphere if you have a curved surface what i recommend is to have another plane all right and i'm going to turbo smooth this all right so we want to make sure this plane is on the same position as the base. So basically in your plug objects, what you have is your main area of detail. And then you want to have a plane here that is even with your surface. So this right here. So of course you can delete that, but it's a good idea to have that. That's what will be deforming, deforming the rest of it. And so usually this plane, you need to have it at zero on the Z axis, just for the sake of simplicity as you're modeling here just because when you create things, it'll be zero on the Z axis. So now we can select this and then use skin wrap. I'm gonna scroll down here, weight all points. Otherwise some far away vertices may not be properly skin wrap. Then we can use vertex or face, add and then add this, give it a second to work. All right. So then we can just move this. All right, we can use freeform, pick surface, pick this as a surface. What I'm going to do is just temporarily smooth this out. Then we can use conform to conform all these vertices to the surface. In fact, let's control shift, left click to change the size here and just quickly conform like so. All right, at this point we can select this object and then just collapse that and then it's the same procedure of just maybe want to have maybe one iteration and then we can just delete and attach and once again go through the process of target welding all right so that is the manual method but of course, these two plugins will allow us to do things much faster. So you can set it to a, an icon here, a button. I've got it set to a hotkey. So I just press that and here you go. Go on to browse and then you can pretty much create your own custom folders with different names here. So it's very simple. 
We also have Crate Brush, which I'll be showing you how to create your own custom plugs in the future. But for this video, we just want to introduce you to the concept and how you can use this first plugin here, Kit Bash Blender. All right, so pretty much, we just turn this off and it's maybe a good idea just to collapse this as well. So pretty much we're gonna select this. We're gonna click on one of these and you can see it has both an icon representation as well as how many edges there are. So these kinds of bolts, they don't actually integrate, they just go on the surface. For example, let's select this. All right, let's click on preview and let's go into the polygon level. And as you can see, whenever we click on something, it's gonna give us a preview. So this bolt does not integrate inside. It just kind of rests on the surface. You can hold control at your selections. This is a very good way of quickly adding detail to your meshes. So instead of having to have like a hundred bolts and then you select in place or clear attack, you can just do this, commit. All right, let's turn off preview. Let's go into element and we can just detach all these bolts. We give them a different material, for example. All right. Let's click on preview again. So now let's use a detail which actually integrates. So for example, this right here, you can see it has eight edges. So how do we know what is a good place? Well, if you make a selection like this, for example, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is perfect for that. Let's click on this one. You can see now it integrates and then we can commit. There we go. But you notice there's a problem here it's looking kind of flat here. That's because we want to actually control Z. We want to activate conform, which is going to pretty much do what we did using the conform. It's going to actually make it match the surface like we did right here. All right, let's check out some other details here. We just have three in the bolts category. We have some circular ones, for example. So quite a number of basic ones to choose from. So let's try one of these caps here. And these actually integrate. For example, this has 16 edges. So for example, that will require a grid of 16 polygons. And if we count the edges, four at the top, four most about four is 16, so there we go. Now we can activate conform as well. Because without conform, it will actually be a little bit flat here. You can see it's not fully matching up, but with conform, it will match up and then we can just commit that. And now we've got this happening. So we can change the Conform amount. If it's conforming too much, you can decrease that. Conform offset as well. We've got things like translate. So if you want to move it a little bit, we got that as well on the X axis, Y axis, and Z axis as well. We've got rotate, which may not make sense here, but for some objects, it'll make a lot more sense depending on what you have. And we can scale. Right now, it's set to auto. And we can just kind of decrease the percentage. So for example, if we don't want to take up the entire selection, we can just decrease that. We can turn off auto as well and just decrease it like this. Commit, and there we go. Now for an object where these mirror settings make more sense, let's look around for something that will fit that. So for example, let's look at one of these buckle details right here. Let's look at this triangular one here. Edge is 12. So what do we need for edges 12? We need a three by three grid like so. So here the mirror will actually work. It will actually show us something. So if you want to change which direction the buckle is facing, you can use this right here. You can also rotate it as well. If you want it to be, for example, 45 degrees here or in this direction, you can just enter in a clean 90 for that. There we go. Commit and there we go. Edge is 10, so let's kind of think about what that requires. Well, if we have a selection of, let's say, 10 or five, that won't work because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So it has to be a selection of four polygons for this one. You can see for this, the Z rotation is wrong. Let's right click on this, there we go. We have face clusters, we also have per face. So for example, if you just make a selection here, it's gonna apply that detail on every single face, which may be a little bit chaotic here. You won't use it for this one, you would use it for one of these bolt details instead. 
now you've got mass bolts here. You can search for what you want right here. So I can search in vents. I've got this. We also have how much blending we have. So for example, if I use something circular, so pretty much this has 16, for example. So what I can do is just select this and then let's preview that. If I click on commit, we're going to get this happening here. However, if I control Z and increase the blend segments, you notice we have a lot more loops going around here. We can also use blend relax to kind of automatically apply it relax right after that. Just have a more smoother transition here. However, in this situation, it's probably best just to have one. You can also use this ladder on the bottom to change how many are displayed at once. You can zoom in closer or zoom in further away. Thank you for watching and take care.